if you've been here before, welcome back. Um, if not, I'm Simone. Um, I have a business called Goblin Fruit and I'm a professional dressmaker, pattern maker, sample maker. Um, but at the moment, I don't have a whole lot of work, so I'm just trying something different. Um, so I'm vlogging every day for a home dressmaking challenge called um, Me Made May. And in Me Made May, you wear um, like your homemade garments as much as you want, but I guess it's kind of documenting it, finding out over the course of May. If you're, I'm sorry, the light changed a lot. It's kind of an intermittently cloudy day. Um, anyway, um, so if the garments that you're making are the garments that you're wearing, I guess for me, to find out um, if this is, like if I'm making the right things for me, if I'm feeling the right things in my wardrobe. Um, I haven't mentioned it before, but my wardrobe isn't all made by me. In fact, really none of it used to be. It's only been in the last year and a half that I've made a lot more stuff for myself. Um, so it's still a little bit of an experiment and, you know, I want to make sure I'm getting it right. Um, also, you know, interested in kind of pinpointing my style a bit better. Um, so to that end, I have actually dug out this book, which is, I'm sure everybody's, like a lot of people are familiar with. It's been very, very popular. This is the Curated Closet by Anushka Reese. Anushka Reese. Um, and I actually, I actually got out a pen and paper last night and actually did, I've had this for years. Um, it's wrinkled from being read in the bathtub. Um, but uh, actually if you write stuff down rather than just read it, it's, it does work a lot better. I, I sat up last night having a go through, so uh, we'll see what happens. All right, but the point is, what am I wearing? I told you I'm trying to be quick. Um, this top is self-drafted. Um, it's a wool knit that I got from a wholesaler. It's actually a really nice fabric and I love the color of it. Um, I have mentioned like I want to this winter redraft this sort of basic what I call my skivvy block um, because although I've made quite a few because it's so easy to, to make them and I can get the neckline that I want and the arm length that I want, there's something wrong with this pattern that I've been using. Um, I have redrafted this pattern for different necklines and different designs so many times over the years and it did originally start out as a bodysuit block for a bodysuit that had lots of panels through the front. So the fact that problems have occurred is not surprising <laughs> over all the years and the problem that bothers me is this excess fabric in here. Um, it's excess in the arm and like in the front of the bodice and this is big um, and quite often this pattern comes out quite long on the shoulder um, so I can afford to take some out of there but I want to make sure that it stays tight up here um, I'll talk about the skirt first but I have like a couple of patterns top patterns that I'm trying to figure out if I should start from scratch again and I need advice I don't know anyway the skirt is Vogue Easy Options V8956. So I made this recently, so I mostly remember what I did, so I can do a mini mini review of the pattern. Um, again, I don't really follow pattern instructions, so I don't really have a lot to say about that. The view that I made is view B, that one. Um, so long wrap around pencil skirt with a kick flare. I have made a change. I have made a change to the pattern. Um, I've eliminated the seam that comes down here. All right, I'll show you the skirt. Frank, you're in the way again. My dog. Um, I hope you can see from all the way back here that I've eliminated the side seam that was in here. And instead of being a curve in the kick, it's now a point, and there's actually a little bit more volume in it now. So this is it, the scoop over, um, fitted, midi length, and then um, this 
kick out drape point down the sides. Right. So in the original pattern, there's a seam here. Um, yeah, back here. There's a seam through here. Um, and then, yeah, the, the bottom is rounded and I've pulled in a point. So the difference that I did was I got this front pattern piece. Oh, yeah, apologies for all those really amazing home sewers who pattern match. This is not pattern matched. I didn't even try. I didn't even think of it. In this big check, I probably should have. And the center back seam is off center. I'll, talk, I'll, I'll tell you why. <laughs> but that's it there. My very unpatterned match center back seam. And these panels, the fabric, is it these two panels? No, somewhere. Maybe it's these two panels. No. Oh yeah, it is these two. Um, they're actually running in completely different directions. That one runs up that way. That one's running across that way. It was going to happen because I obliterated that seam. Um, so what I did was I laid both of these pieces perpendicular to each other. So skirt front, skirt back, into the point at the corner of the fabric. Um, so that they met here at this top point where the seams would overlap but then they flared out a bit more so that they sat into that point and there was a little bit more volume in that perpendicular right angle. I hope that makes sense. Which means it was just became one pattern piece that wrapped around from the front through that perpendicular angle and up to the back. And if I'd have wanted a pattern match, I should have placed the under front pattern piece here and the uh, right back pattern piece there. But I actually don't think I even would have had enough fabric for that to make a full square. Mm, but still, this when this side seam and that side seam met, they still would have been at right angles with the fabric running in completely different directions. No, there was just no way to pattern match this. I'm glad I saw that sort of thing. I probably could have done a slightly better job on the back and I'm quite happy that the two that the change happens on the front rather than the side seam that the right angle direction change happens um it's probably for the best so yeah it's not too bad it's not too bad um yeah so I did the right angle finish um because I'd looked at some photos of this skirt on Instagram that other people had made and it didn't look as full in real life as it does on the model like she looks like she's got a big swing of fabric but the couple that I saw it was just not big and drapey it was quite small and I wanted it to be more dramatic than than that so and if I made this skirt again I'd make it even more dramatic I'd narrow off that angle so it wasn't a right angle it actually sat out so it wasn't quite so long but then I'd add heaps more volume in there so it was huge on that side more dramatic mm. um but yeah and so the reason why the center back seam is off is because i cut a size 14 and through the hip and because i don't use the full seam allowances even to the waistband i only needed a 12. um the waistband is still a 14 i haven't cut that down but the skirt itself is a 12. Um, but I could only cut that fabric out of this side seam because there's no sides in there. So I pulled the whole skirt this way, which, you know, it's worked. It just means that that center back seam is not center back. It's off by like an inch. Um, and if it pattern matched, nobody noticed, but it doesn't. So, oops. Um, probably my only issue with it and the reason why I keep fiddling with it is that this wrap over has to sit perfectly on top of the waistband of the other wrap over otherwise your hemline doesn't match and it looks like it's askew but that's probably me being really finicky and there's no real way to fix that i don't think unless you um buttoned or hooked that waistband down all the way along so yeah um yeah I, and i'd also like to just make the straight wrap over pencil skirt in this i think it's nice it's a nice shape um, it's 
Yeah, other weird part about it is the underskirt here has got darts. Um, and this side of the back skirt has darts, but the overskirt and this side of the skirt has none. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Just different. Um, cool. So, that said, what I'm trying to work out some plans for my top. I found in my stash three patterns. For like jersey high neck tops and I like I want to be able to make this very very high crew neck last winter I was really into turtlenecks but now this one which is a bit lower is my favorite I think it's got this real kind of vintaginess it could even be tighter um, to there is what I want um, but none of these patterns have a neckline that high so I'd have to draft it in um, so Number one is the Simple Sew Miranda Tee, which I got from a magazine. Um, number two, I've had for ages with Vintage Find or Thrifted Find, um, Quick Sew, I think it was like undergarments. Now, Quick Sew patterns I've always found to be quite well fitting and really easy to sew um, and just nicely drafted. Pretty basic, but nicely drafted. And then my third one is the top of this dress, which is, I've also thrifted for a grand total of 50 cents. And it's McCall's 7561 um, jersey dress, which again, not a high enough neckline, but the scoop back and scoop front neckline is really cute on this. Now, looking at everything, this, this McCall's pattern might be the winner. I might, might be the only one I actually make, only because the person who owned this before me has actually already cut out the pattern in the right size. <laughs> so I don't have to do that. One, I don't have to feel guilty about cutting out a paper pattern um, rather than tracing it. And two, it's already cut out in a medium. Yay. Okay, so I have worked out, this is, this is my front body pattern so it looks kind of weird right um, it's had a full bust adjustment because I hate fabric pulling across the bust um, which is why it sticks out so much here um, and then comes right back in again on this front piece and sometimes I do do a keyhole and a pussy bow with this so that's why that's in there um, but so the, I don't know if you can see, there's a black line that I've just drawn in, like looking over all of the patterns, this is what's wrong, what's happened to this pattern. And I don't know how it happened, but you know, any old way, there's this scooping out on the front is not enough, which would account for that bit of extra fabric right there. So I could just remake this pattern with that bit cut out and see if that works. But I've also noticed that my sleeve shape is weird. And this, I do not know how it's happened. Like a normal sleeve, <laughs> the shaping goes in on, on the sleeve head, goes in on the sleeve head, and then the arm of the sleeve just comes down straight. Mine's the opposite. There's no shaping here on the sleeve head, but it scoops in as it goes into the sleeve. I don't know how that happened. I don't, I mean, obviously it still works. Well, obviously it doesn't because I've got this bit of extra fabric, which would be that scoop that needs to come out. So maybe I should try a different pattern. My concern with these patterns is that I'm gonna have to do that full bust adjustment to get the volume in the top and I'm again going to have to take a whole heap out of the waist and I am going to have to build up the neckline so that it's tight, so that it's smaller. Uh -huh. I've pulled out like all the pattern pieces. This is the simple sew one. This is the quick sew one and I've measured them against my pattern and I've measured them against one of my favourite ready to wear t-shirts. 
and they all need heaps of modification. So do I modify my pattern and get it right? Or do I try something new and see what those ones do? I don't know. Anyway, I don't get a whole lot of comments, but if you want to leave a comment, tell me what I should do. Um, and thanks for listening. I know it's crazy, crazy times when we're all sitting at home and trying to find new things to do. This is my new thing to do that gets me up and gets me dressed every day so that I can get my actual work that I need to get done, done. Um, yay! Oh, for, lastly, if you're working from home and you need a little bit of help with focus, I mean, from when this thing first started, I was having trouble with focus. I just couldn't concentrate. Um, my mum did message me a link to a podcast. It's only 17 minutes long. I listened to it yesterday. I thought it was quite good. There were some cute hints in there. So the podcast is Grow With Soul and the episode is Finding and Keeping Focus. So yeah, I recommend that. I'll, I'll link it. Okay.